Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. This is the Q Garden drama. And here we are again. We just got back. So let's take a look at our test here that we have to do. I'm sure it's going to be at this table. There we go. Deadly plant experiment. Here we go. I imagine that one of these plants would be capable of releasing a toxic vapor. I need to find out exactly how it could be done. I shall begin now. Watson, if you are at all optimistic to have dinner this evening, then I'd recommend that you put on the gas mask. A prickly plant. <coughs> Interesting. What a strong and effective defensive mechanism. Oh. I find the behavior of predators utterly fascinating. Holy shit. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Okay. Now what happens when we do this? Okay, same day. It closed oh. again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. You did. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. Okay. I am interested in what might occur if the prickly plant should shoot at it. All right. All right. Now we're gonna take the liquid from this alkaloid and put it there because we want it to open up. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Okay. Now we're going to put this. One of these guys This here. plant seems to have had no reaction. This plant. This plant seems to have had no reaction from the caterpillars. I thought it did. This plant seems. It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. Okay, hold on. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. I am interested. Hmm. Let's move this one and swap it for that one. Okay. I'm gonna open it up. It appears to... I find the behavior of predator. This plant seems to have had... This plant seems to have had no reaction. Toxic gas with spores. Extraordinary. Cool. The plants would be capable of killing only if they were directly next to the victim and stimulated at precisely the right moment. Let us take our caterpillars to the colonial collection room. We may see things more clearly there. It is too early, Watson. Our suspects will be there. Let us investigate Kew Gardens one more time and ask some questions. Yep. Okay. So let's see what we found out here. Deadly precision. 
Alright, so let's see here. Albert is not very good at botany. No. It is doubtful he could have learned. I'm going to say it's doubtful. I don't think he's that damn smart. I mean, he could be mastermind behind it all. Alright, back off to Q Gardens. Interesting. Interesting. A plant that committed a murder. Really, a, a plant was a murder weapon. Um, anyway, guys, I want to thank you for your support. I'm hoping that you're enjoying this game and this series. I'm enjoying playing it. I'm hoping that this ain't the last case, because I've actually enjoyed playing this one out. Come on now. Are we going to get there today? Tomorrow or next week? How far do we have to go? There we go. Okay, let's go talk to this guy right here. Something tells me he's got some information for us. <clears throat> Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm uh, the only uh, one with a passion for botany. The picture. I do not think so. This photograph of you <coughs> and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. <sighs> but you have no right to. Do yes, tell do. us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of twelve. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, oh, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work. For Dunn always lived the high life. Oh, God. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes. He provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was, he declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my <coughs> father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. Liar. Liar. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. <coughs> it ought to have been removed during the cleanup. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Oh, you are so Evidently. Guilty. You are so damn guilty. Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. I do not believe that fucker at all. Alright, let's go talk to Albert. We got some... We got some questions for your ass, Albert. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your <coughs> movements here on that day? Suspicious? <coughs> well, Excuse I was me. working in the seed house. Taking care of a lice, but something or, or Lear, Pontus, or no, wait, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes, he came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. 
They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my god. Hmm. Huh. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. Uh, it's difficult, lying. that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. A fucking liar. What about that letter? And yet, I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. Right. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Okay. Should we go talk to Miss White, guys, or should we look at our deductions? Um, let's take a look at our deductions real quick. He didn't have a motive. Let's see now. She did. And she had motive because he was going to get rid of her. here. Nope. Let's go talk to Miss White. I think we're getting real close to solving this case, so guys. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday okay. is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. Okay. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. Hmm. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I that? only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? All oh, right. Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Yes. 
Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to stop this video right here, and uh, we will continue it. Now that no one's here, we can get on our investigating stuff. We can do it all illegal, like break in the shit. Anyway, um, guys, again, this is Snapshot saying keep on gaming. We'll see you on the next one.